Hello. Right, I know I look like hell. I've just woke up. I'm getting over from COVID, getting better from COVID. I've lost my shaggy. So going to park this morning. But I need to be able to get a sentence out. So if you want me to be able to talk to you, I've got to film it before the kids get up. So it doesn't matter. I look like hell. Um. Welcome to this month's garden collaboration. I'll list everybody's details in the description box below. If you want to take part next month, let me know because it runs March, October every year. But we're going to do it different next year. I'm sick of advertising other people's channels, so don't bother doing it. So, um, right. I was saying, we lost, we've been moving things off the allotment. Today is the last day because even though. Um, they're meant to kick me off on the 31st of August if I'm not paid my rent. I had an email saying that this weekend's the last weekend you can pay it, which would take you to the 26th. And we're busy tomorrow and busy the day after, so it's just the kids. Tomorrow's the last day. Um, which is very sad, because obviously, because as we've been taking it apart and moving things, it just feels like you've been taking apart 11 years of your life, and I've been thinking about. You know, when we first got it, I only had one toddler and one baby, and now I've got five kids, and the things have accumulated on there over time. Like, me and Pudge went down on a winter's day to do them fruit trees, and all those strawberry plants, we picked runners off somebody's compost pile and planted them, and they all worked, and just things, memories. Um, so I'll show you what we've moved down. Like I say, we lost a week, week and a half, because we had all this horrible bug, which I was conv I'm convinced was COVID, but I can't prove it. Oh, yeah, get this. And this kind of put the tin hat on things. We was told by the committee member, not the not the chairman who's married to Carol who I work with, him who sends out all these letters about weeds and stuff. We was told that Pudge was too old, my oldest Pudge, was too old to do the children's competition this year, right? He's 12. I went to work the other day. Carol all worked with says, How old's your oldest? Says he's 12. He says, uh, Didn't you want didn't you want to do children's competition this year then? I says, No, I says, Nosy Parker, because that's my nickname for him on committee. I says, Nosy Parker said he was too old. And I double checked with him twice. And he said, He said, Push was too old and he couldn't enter it. And Carol will work, we've just turned to uh, our boss's assistant who does who does these trophies and things. And she says, how old's that other kid who's doing it? And my boss's assistant went 13. So, Carol will work with his husband, the chairman, just didn't know about it. And him on the committee has deliberately been spiteful to Pudge, just saying he can't take part in the children's competition when he could have done. And bearing in mind next year he would have been too old, or it would have been his last one last year, so he's not going to be doing much longer anyway, even if we weren't quitting. Pudge doesn't deserve that. Pudge is a good boy. He comes down in all bloody weathers helping me down the allotment. He doesn't deserve to be treated like that. And can you imagine if I had been pre-warned? On the award night, if we'd have gone down there and all the other kids and all his bro brothers and his sister got a award and there's a kid his age getting an award and he just sat there getting nothing. Spiteful. But that's that's how it is. This is the situation we're in. Right, so let me... Uh... Oh, yeah, because this Karen, I'm coming off. And she went, oh, you're coming off again, are you? And at the time, I was annoyed because I thought, I said to her, I've never come off, Carol. I've been on there 11. Sometimes I've dropped off plot, but I've never, ever come off. I've been on there 11 years. No one's ever, you know, worked that plot other than me because it was a brand new plot when I come on. they just plied it ready. Um, but thinking about it, I think she might have meant last year when I was thinking of coming off and then I didn't. So I've told Carol now and I've told her why. And I says, I says, I'm on plot next door being horrible about my kids and she says she says well it shouldn't be you coming off really should it it should be him and I says well I can't do it Carol so I'll show you what we've done I still haven't finished my fence because I ain't got enough sticks although I did I did start trying to make it longer look so <coughs> in this bath I've planted some fresh peas because my mum reckons we're laying Indian summer because um the actual summer's been rubbish and they have come up they're raspberry canes. I don't know if they're going to survive. We had to cut them right down to move them. See, it's the wrong time of year to be moving stuff, lot. That's the cherry tree I moved. And if you can see, 
Ah, oh, focus. That's the cherry tree I moved. And it, it looks all right. That's the plum tree and it looks dead as a doornail. And that was really heavy to move back. But my mum reckons just to leave them because they might be in root shock and they might be all right. Um, yes, yeah, so they're raspberry canes. I don't know if they're going to survive or not, but... I had one courgette off that and my mum says leave it out because they reproduce, they produce more, you know. So we'll see. Well, that's the point. My mum said, because I said to her, the only thing I can't recreate at home is the rose and rose potatoes I normally do. And my mum said I could use a couple of feet of her allotment in the next village to plant potatoes if I want because um, they're low maintenance, are the potatoes. So that's nice for her. Bees! I put carrots in here, but I have no luck with carrots anyway. And um, my chickens have been in here scratching up, so I don't think it's going to come off. My golden Virginia is going big lot. I've already took some leaves, all this some leaves. A uh, couple of raspberry canes have popped in here. Now these are all strawberry plants. I don't know if they're going to survive or not, but I didn't want to leave them down there. Strawberry plant. I had so many strawberry plants. I'll show you when we get down there. I've gave some away, but I still still load. Right, I my little gooseberry plant there, look. And then uh, the raspberry canes in that one. And that one's empty. But by the time I come back from the allotment yesterday, I sliced my toe open on the down the allotment yesterday, so I, I was in new mood to fill it up. Um, you can't, well, you can't see, but on the side of the washing line, there's a pear tree, which is doing all right. And an apple tree that's wilted in a little bit. The only thing still down the allotment is a couple of raspberry canes and a cherry tree, which I'm going to try and move today. And then that's it, we're done. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've just got back from the allotment and it's emotional anyway. After 11 years. But I'm also very angry, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So if I start crying, you're to ignore it. So... So we went down the allotment, and um, I wanted to film, you know, to show you that we pretty much cleared everything. There was just one cherry tree left, and a few strawberries, and that was it. And that... Um, there was a bath down there that we couldn't move because it was knackered so Gabriel had smashed his smithereens and I took a bin bag down to fill it with bits because I didn't want to leave any mess I didn't want anybody saying we'd left any mess and there's a rule of, I've had I've had about three fires on the allotment in 11 years I'll never have a fire and the rule is not to have one at weekends well it's Friday and it were only a small fire um, just to you know just to burn off a few weeds and that because I wanted to leave it as bare and pristine as I could um there was some metal pipes off an old swing frame that I used as a bean thing I don't know if you remember and I was going to come back for them tonight but I'm not going back now but anyway so we started this fire Imu lives on the back of the allotments as a as a cattery and a dog's uh what they call boarding thing Anyway, he's having letters off the council because he's been caught before lifting his fence panel, coming onto the allotments and stealing things, right? So this is the character a man we're dealing with. He puts his head over the fence and he doesn't just say, I say, duck, that smoke's going in our garden. Have you much more to burn or can you stop or whatever? He's mouthing at me. And... <sighs> Swearing and shouting, and I was very calm to begin with, and he just kept shouting. And then he starts trying to lift the fence panel to come on to have a go at me in person. But he couldn't move it. And we and I said to him, It's a very small fire, it's very nearly burnt out. If I put water on it now, there'll be even more smoke. But he wouldn't listen. And then I was like, Look, if I can't have a fire, are you gonna take this bag of rubbish then? You know, that bath. And he's still mouthing at me and threatening me. And I've got all the kids, who in the end are just shouts, fuck off. And he's still mouthing at me. And then this bloke who's on the committee. <laughs> he 
Sorry, it's because I've held it together all this time. It's an half come over my life. Um, this bloke off the committee. Hang on. So this bloke off the committee, who I've never spoken to in the whole 11 years I'm on there, comes over and starts mouthing at me and shouting. And I kept saying, let me speak. And he said, they were shouting at me. Anyway, when he did let me bloody speak, turns out I didn't even know this bloke was complaining. He'd just come over to a pop at me. And by now the fire's nearly burnt out anyway, so I said to the kids, just put some water on it, which is going to make it steam more, but that's what they want. We'll get what we want and we'll go, but I'm not coming back later. <laughs> and then we ran into Carol who worked with his husband and he was really reasonable, but he always is. He just said, like, have you much more to burn? And I says, I'm pouring it out now. I says, I'm going, it's my last one. I just didn't really want to leave any rubbish. And he said, fair enough. <laughs> and that way we come off. <laughs> Careful, Barry. I just, it just made me what's it after 11 years. It was, you know, left on a really sour note like that. The people are arseholes. <sighs> Sorry, I'm crying because cause it's been 11 years and <sighs> people are arseholes. And I just, I'm just bloody sick of people and stress and harassment and then. Um, this is the thing about my husband. My husband's ill. He, has, he had a breakdown. He hasn't left the house in about a year. And I can't say to him, Oh, get better. Come back. Everything's lovely outside. People are lovely. Because that's not the truth, is it? So anyway, I wanted to do a video with a plot. I've, I've left it really clean and it's empty. But that's not going to happen. So... Cause I ain't going there ever again, and we'll see if there's any comeback about what happened this afternoon. But I um, I think it means to make the right decision, don't it? So I'll see you next time.